Are you thinking of starting your own food business? Well, in today's video, I'm sharing with you three huge mistakes that food business owners make when crafting their own food menu and how you can actually avoid them. So then that way you can save yourself from pulling all your hair out. And on top of that, save yourself some money. Make sure you guys keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you start a thriving small business and a profitable food business. If you guys enjoy these type of content, these type of valuable content to help you start your food business, make sure you guys smash that like button because it shows us this is the type of content you enjoy. So go ahead and smash that like button. If you're thinking about starting your own food business but you just don't know where to start, or if you don't feel confident enough to take that leap because you just don't have the experience to do so. You could end up spending tons of money racking up tens of thousands of dollars of unnecessary expense. Or even worse, focusing on the wrong items, draining your resources, your time, and your money. And that's the reason why I created this free masterclass where I share with you how you can leverage Instagram to build your own food business, whether it's a home bakery, a cloud kitchen, or a food truck. All the lessons that I wish I had learned when I first began on my journey. So go ahead and click on the link in the description to join me in the free masterclass. Now, without further ado, let's dive right in. The first huge mistake that I see a lot of food entrepreneurs make is creating food for themselves. This is a huge and a common mistake that a lot of first time owners make. They end up creating something that they themselves want, but neglecting what their customers are wanting and needing. At the end of the day, what we're creating is a vehicle, a solution to someone else's problem. If this solution does not fit the problem, then no one's gonna employ us, no one's gonna buy our product. And sometimes we see that people can actually attain success by creating food that they enjoy. And that is mostly by luck because they themselves represent a bigger demographic of people out there that might need the same solution. So this applies only if you're strategical and only if you know why you're creating the food the way that it is. And if there is enough demand for it. And in today's world, your customers care a lot more about your story, your values, and why it is that you created the item. So just having a story that serves yourself, that is pigeonholed with what you believe in, but neglecting your customers and their journey is really doing you a big disservice and would not get any traction out there. And you're just gonna left in the dark trying to figure out what happened. For instance, my powerlifting friend was struggling because he couldn't find something that was healthy, something that would actually give him energy to do his workout routine. And that's the reason why when the girlfriend saw this problem, she went to create these desserts to help him out. He went on, ate it, and it was an amazing solution to a problem that he has. So what did he do? He posted a picture of this on his Instagram. Now they were being very, very strategical about it because they didn't think about creating a business right off the bat. He took a picture and shared it with their Instagram followers. And from there onwards, they had a proven demand for it. People were messaging them, people were asking, begging for it. It all the time at his gym on Instagram and that's when they decided to create a business out of it and in their first year of business they made more than six figures guys if you guys are interested in this story definitely check out this video right here and that's the reason why you need to be intentful you must create a solution to someone else's problem and when you do that your customers would come begging for you for it. Your customers would be going on your website, placing an order, even when you haven't opened the cart yet. That's how you're able to build a thriving food business. Now the secret in creating a solution that solves a problem is to understand your customer demographic. Understand their interests, what makes them happy, what makes them excited, what makes them passionate understand what their frustrations are, understand what makes them have this, I wish I had this moment. Understand what their lifestyle is, where do they go on a regular basis, what do they shop. Understand what are some of their values in order for you to create this product. And if you struggle on how to do the proper target market research, the analysis, then I invite you to join me at Foodiepreneurs 
finest program that I've created that shares with you the step-by-step -step process and how you can achieve all this within the next 30 to 60 days. Inside the program, you're going to find out all the templates and worksheet that you need to create a successful food business. So if you're thinking about starting a food business, then in my Foodiepreneur's Finest program, you're going to get all of that plus more. So make sure you guys check it out in the link below. The second huge mistake that I see people make is creating a huge menu. I know you're excited. I know you're passionate. However, this is the downfall of a lot of food businesses. I'll give you an example. You're excited, you're creating these cookies, and all of a sudden, your friends are like, hey, you know what, these cookies are great, but have you thought about croissants? Have you thought about the macaroons? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about different flavors? And what do you end up doing? You end up creating 12 items, from rainbow-colored cookies, to s'more cookies, to chocolate croissant, and that is a big, big downfall to any startups. Now, why is that the case? Well, first of all, there is something called the Pareto's Law. What does that mean? That means that 20% of your items are gonna generate more than 80% of your sales. As an example, when you have 10 items, only two of them are gonna account for majority of your revenue. So what does that mean? That means you should only focus on the two items because it's going to help you solve a lot of operational issues. You don't need to create your muffins, your croissants, your macaroons and cookies. You can only focus on let's say macaroons. These are your top sellers. And on top of that, this also helps you save on a lot of unnecessary ingredient cost because when you create items that no one buys, it goes to waste and it increases your overall ingredient costs. And lastly, when you diversify so much, people don't know what you're really good at. What's your specialty? Why are they ordering from you? And that's why you're not going to be able to speak to anyone if you're so diversified. Rather, if you're really great at making the best macaroons, now people remember who you are. People remember whenever they think about the best macaroons, they think of you. So what is the solution out there? Start small. Start with one or two or three items and find your hero item. The item that people are willing to buy from you all the time. When you do that, you can reiterate that. You can ask for feedback. You can perfect this item. Make it so good that everyone in town knows you're the best at making this item. Only when you are able to achieve this, then do you derive from that. Then when you create ultimate alternative items or the complementary items. That's when you're able to build a solid foundation for your food business. This is what we say doing business smart rather than burning out in your own food business. The last mistake that a lot of food owners make, myself included, is not looking at numbers. Now imagine this for a second. You're starting your cookie business, you're selling dozens at a time. Every month money is coming in, you're happy, but six months down the road, you've sold thousands of cookies. You only see a few hundred dollars in your bank account. What happened? This is a very common scenario that happens, that people work for hours and months and years later to realize that, you know what, they're actually not making money. They don't know where the money goes. They don't know why they are bleeding out money because they don't take into account of the high ingredient costs. They do not program the profits into their operations. They do not program and account for their own labor costs later to find out that they're actually sucking out all the money from their business. This is exactly what happened to one of my students, Michaela. When she started her donut shop, she actually was able to sell out every single donut day. Every time she does her donate date, she's super happy because hundreds of orders would go out. Yet, when she looks at her bank account, it's always near the starting point. Why is that the case? It is because she didn't realize that her numbers needs to be fine-tuned and the profits needs to be programmed into her business. You need to understand your numbers in order for you to actually run a thriving small food business rather than a hobby. Your dream isn't gonna grow if you're not making enough money to grow your business and to grow your passion. But I know the math part of things, the financials, the budgeting, all those things are scary and confusing. 
So that's the reason why I created Foodie Printer's Finest. In this program, we share with you how you can create a food business with the solid foundations. So then that way, the financial part, the money side of things are all figured out for you. And by joining Foodie Printer's Finest, you get access to our private student group. This is a place where you can share your work, share your questions, your marketing ideas, anything that you have, throw it in there and we would be able to reply you and all the different students would be able to come in to give you the feedback you need. And best of all, we jump on a group bi-weekly coaching call where I answer all your questions, where I bring on the latest marketing trends, where I share with you what is going on and we get to see what other like-minded individuals are going through in their food business. The Foodie Printer's Finest program is a program I created using all the learnings that I've had, all the mistakes that I've made. This is a program that I wish I had when I first started with all the templates and worksheets you need in order for you to build a thriving and profitable food business. To join, make sure you guys go into the link below, join, sign up, and I'll see you guys in there. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video as I share with you the three huge mistakes that food owners make when creating their menu item. These mistakes can easily save you tens of thousands of dollars when you are able to improve alongside of them. If you guys enjoy these type of content, make sure you guys smash that like button so I know, so Jason knows, so we know to create more of these contents for you. So go ahead and smash that like button. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in next video.